Torture is one of the most serious crimes that can be committed against a human being. It aims to dehumanise through calculated acts of cruelty, to remove victims' dignity and to leave them powerless. It often leaves scars for a lifetime. This is why in 1984, the Convention Against Torture was adopted. It aims to prevent torture and other acts of cruel, inhuman and degrading punishment around the world. Since then, the absolute prohibition against torture has become accepted as a peremptory norm of international law. This means that all states, regardless of whether they ratified the convention or other relevant treaties that ban the practice, are bound by the prohibition of torture and ill treatment. The right to be free from torture is absolute and can't be set aside. It can't ever be justified on any grounds, in any circumstances, even in times of war. Four elements are essential to establish torture as defined by the Convention Against Torture. The conduct must cause severe pain or suffering, physical or mental. The conduct must be inflicted intentionally. The torture must be inflicted for a specific purpose. There needs to be the involvement of a state official in some way. Torture can be committed both through an act or an omission. Thus, a state's failure to respond to the basic needs of its prisoners for a prolonged period of time can amount to torture. For example, the case of SLV, Venezuela in Latin America, concerns the lack of proper medical care for the diabetic condition of a prisoner, which eventually resulted in the death of the victim. The infliction of severe mental harm can also constitute torture. Such acts include sleep deprivation, constant threats of rape or harm, or forcing the victim to witness a loved one being tortured. Similarly, enforced disappearances, which can inflict severe suffering on the disappeared persons, as well as on those close to the victim, can also amount to torture. While there is a requirement for torture to be inflicted for a specific purpose, this has been interpreted widely. Some of the purposes that have been recognised include to produce a confession, as a form of punishment, to intimidate the population, to humiliate the victim or to discriminate. Azul Rojas Marin, who is a transgender person, was arbitrarily arrested by police officers in Peru. She was raped, beaten and verbally abused due to her sexual orientation. The Inter-American Court found that she had been tortured for a discriminatory purpose, which could be derived from the circumstances surrounding her treatment. In most cases, torture occurs when individuals find themselves in a situation of complete dependency when they are held in police custody, prison, healthcare facilities, or deprived of their liberty in other contexts. Sometimes, if the context is highly coercive or there is a distinct imbalance of power, the prohibited purpose can be implied. For example, the suggestion that a rape that takes place in a prison happened for simple private sexual gratification purposes has not been accepted. Under the Convention, torture requires the involvement of a state official, at least by acquiescence. This will usually include officials exercising public security functions, such as police, military, prison or detention authorities. But it can also involve other officials who exercise control over individuals, such as mental health facility administrators, teaching staff, or officials at centres holding asylum seekers or refugees, persons holding de facto power as public officials, or private contractors carrying out governance functions. States are also responsible for tolerating acts of private actors, for instance, in situations of domestic violence. The key obligation of states under the Convention Against Torture are not to torture, ever, to protect from torture and prevent it, to prosecute and punish torturers, to afford reparations to victims, not to send someone to a country where they are likely to face torture, not to admit evidence obtained by torture as evidence in legal proceedings. To prevent torture, states can adopt certain measures, 
including training of law enforcement and prison personnel and introducing independent monitoring mechanisms. Victims of torture have a right to a remedy and adequate reparation. Given the long-lasting consequences often left by torture, beyond the physical and the mental harm, survivors can obtain different forms of reparations which go beyond compensation to address their different needs. Visit redress.org forward slash resources forward slash training to learn more.